Can you let me for a second, hon? Come on, princess. Thanks for uh, catching that. I have to get some sleep. No one else even noticed. A nurse and an anesthesiologist. I wouldn't have expected them to. Generally, that group also includes surgical assistants. Generally. Hey, you want to grab a drink? No, I'm going to change and stop over at my girlfriend's. I'll see you later. Night. Excuse me. Uh, hey, you're a doctor, aren't you? I'm a surgical assistant. Yeah, but you have your MD and all. Yes. Listen, I need a doctor to sign off on this drug request from a couple of the ambulance guys. They're getting ready to book it, and you know we've been waiting about 15 minutes. You think you can take care of that for me? Let me see your most recent request log. Hey, you. Hey. Bodies that obey absolute laws of motion, they still fire the imagination. You're almost out of groceries. You need some money? No, I don't want your money. I don't need anything. Well, I'm leaving this here for you anyways. You need to save what you have. What's your scientific opinion of UFOs? You might say my scientific opinion of UFOs means that they aren't scientific. Here, have a beer. 
No, I'm good. Come on, just have one. Just relax with us. I don't want one. One I saw about nine years ago was quite spectacular. I was in a research plane coming from Hawaii to California, about 20,000 feet. I was doing some reading. Why are you checking the time? There's a lot I could get done tonight. I should probably leave soon. I hardly see you. There's just so much I want to do and should be getting done. Just go. I'll be here to take you to the interview. Keep her alive until I find her a body. I can't talk anymore. I'm tired. I've got to go to sleep. Then you, you didn't find her a body? Well, I've got to be careful. I can't afford to be identified as the last person to see with a girl before she disappears. Do you think you get one? There are many things left for tomorrow. Jason's here! Come hang out with me. Why aren't you ready to go? I'll get ready. You can't go to the interview. You're drunk. Call them and ask to have it rescheduled. Tell them you're sick. I want to go to the interview. I'm fine. I won't take you to it. Then I'll take a taxi. Just stop it. Who the fuck do you think you are? Give me my phone! <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sure we'll only keep this one for six months, too. Oh, fuck you. I can't do this anymore with you. I can't. Oh, what? Can't spend time with me and just be with me? Can't be affectionate anymore? If all I want is for you to just be here, but you've just been an asshole lately. I'm getting older, and I'm not accomplishing anything I need to. I need time. Lots of time to do what I want to be doing. Then just get out of here! Whatever. Hey. Hey, man. You just coming in? You're a little early. Anything interesting going on? It's pretty much been the same all day. They brought the traffic accident victim in, though. It's kind of strange. How so? The guy was run over by a big rig, but he's still alive. They don't think I'll make him much longer, and his body has several old surgical scars. More than I've ever heard of on one person. 
I haven't been able to pull up a medical history. No, they didn't find any ID on him. Is he in trauma? Yeah. What are they planning to do? Dr. Seven was on duty. They're monitoring him now, but Severin said that he'll be dead in hours, so he's not gonna bother much about him. Might be worth checking out. I'll catch you later. All right. You had a traffic accident victim brought in last night. Which room is he in? Trauma two. What's his condition? Critical, but he's somehow holding on.
Strock and Winston? Yeah. I'm Jason Frankenstein. I authorized your pharmacy request yesterday. You've been procuring more narcotics than you should need for some time now. I don't care if you're selling it to dealers or dealing it yourself. I need something done. In exchange, I can provide you with more narcotics than you've been getting, at least for a little while. What do you need done? In about 15 minutes, a patient in the ICU will go into cardiac arrest. After he's stabilized, they'll want a transport of the Nicholson Arkoff. I need you to make sure you're assigned that responsibility and that you bring him to an address I'll provide. How do you know he's going to nick off? I know the doctor on duty. He'll send him there. He won't want to handle the case anymore. How long will he be at this other address? Permanently. Hospital will be expecting a body. That'll be your concern. You're going to need to give a substantial delivery up front when we hand him over to you. Besides what you're going to do for us down the road. Fine. Just give me a list. Left my notepad in that room. It's just that 24-hour bug that's been going around. I'm going to leave now, get some rest. Hopefully be back tomorrow. All right. Irregular heartbeat, trauma two. Pupil's not responsive. Start the chest compressions. Still no good. We're gonna have to shock him. Ready. Clear. No good. Do it again. Ready. Clear. Still no good. Turn it up all the way. Fully charged. Clear. We got something. Send him to Nicholson Arkoff. The transit will kill him. He's going to die no matter what. The cardiac care unit is better equipped to keep him stabilized in the meantime. This is the stupidest fucking game. I got a call from Kuna Memorial to nick off. You got it. You gotta be fucking kidding me.
It's good. What'd you find? Both 6 1, one's 220, the other's 230. Both home when I called. 1958 Lund Road, no next of kin. Truck 324 to dispatch. This is dispatch, go ahead. It's the next street. Yeah, we're having automotive problems. We're at the corner of Lund and Fraser. Uh, patient is critical but stabilized. I repeat, patient is critical but stabilized. Can you send another truck? We'll have someone there in 15. Copy that. Responding to a 911 call, male caller, playing of chest pains, dizziness. No, I'm the only person here. I didn't make a call. Hmm, probably a prank caller. Should check out the house, just so the cops don't bother him. Yeah, you mind if you come in and take a quick look around? If we can give the house an all clear, they would just list it as a prank caller, and then uh, the cops won't uh, come and investigate. We're gonna need to get your statement anyway. Sure. dead. Nine minutes to make it look like he's been through a car wreck. That'll save time. Last night, the man constructed and reanimated by my grandfather resurfaced. He was admitted to the hospital after having been the victim of a hit and run accident. The effect of Adrenerol, the drug injected into him to give him life and strength, has been far beyond the expectations had of it. From the recent accident and previous injuries, his body has sustained multiple bone fractures, fourth degree burns, major organ damage. He should be long dead. Current condition is still critical. I'm going to administer an injection of Adrenerol. It will hopefully provide his body with the necessary strength and stimulation to improve his condition. It's possible his system is too weak to handle the effects of the drug, but he has no chance of pulling through without it. Heart rate is increasing. Respiration is strengthening. I'm administering a sedative.
Stop! What are you thinking about? Hmm? You've been looking lost in your thoughts for some time. What are you thinking about? I'm a doctor. I lost a patient today. What happened? The situation developed beyond my control. My name's Barb Devine. What's yours? Jason Frankenstein. You know, there was a doctor with that name in Germany. Back in the 1800s, claimed to have made a man from the corpses of others. Well, go back enough generations, and it's the same family. Really? I find that sort of thing pretty fascinating. Lost civilizations, extraterrestrials, myths and monsters, missing persons, magic and witchcraft, unexplained phenomena. So is there any truth to the stories about your ancestor? <laughs> You're a psychic detective, no doubt. <laughs> no, I'm an actress. In film. Have I seen anything of you? Well, if you have, you've probably seen a lot of me. My specialties are heavy petting films and trashy dramas. Overtime at the office? Bus stop trash? Late night newswoman? The flight attendants? <laughs> I'm naked more at work than I am at home. <laughs> Do you find that uncomfortable? The nudity? No. I find being uncomfortable uncomfortable. I mean, I wouldn't do anything more than that, but I've never had a problem with it. When I was young, out of high school, I was broke. So back then, I used to earn extra money dancing in this god-awful topless club. But I was horrible. But that's how I started as an actress. You see, one night, the club burnt to the ground. All the dancers, we were standing outside, wrapped in blankets. This guy came up to us, said his name was Jerry. He needed some beautiful young women to appear in an action movie he was shooting. And that was my first role. In the future, you want to stay in the business? Yeah, but this exploitation genre is a young woman's arena. I'll age gracefully into other types of roles. <laughs> but back to you. So you're a doctor. This experiment that your ancestor is supposed to have performed, does that fall into the tampering in God's domain category? Well, to extend a person's life continually through brain transplantation, it would mean mankind's ability to progress wouldn't be held back by the deaths of intellectual leaders. The distraction caused by society's cumulative fear of dying would be greatly reduced. It would allow man to shift upward to a new level of existence. But the man your ancestor is said to have created, wasn't it violent? My father and my grandfather used to debate the causes, the ideologies of that all the time. My grandfather believed that any destructive behavior could be attributed to specific situational causes. Unknown brain damage, shock, provocation. But my father believed that the process of dying and being brought back to life fundamentally and radically altered a person's perception of life itself. That such a person's mind and morality operated on a plane so different from ours as to make it virtually incomprehensible. It's true, isn't it? It really did happen. Would you even believe that there could be truth to that? <laughs> I put my faith in the gospel of Brad Crandall. It is true. But he and what he created died hundreds of years ago and his journals were unknown to the people. It all became a story. But it wouldn't have been a story to your family. Well, most everyone in my family since then has been a doctor of some sort. They knew what happened. They knew the science behind it. 
they tried to move the experiment forward, but circumstances always seemed to stop them. My grandfather, he had more success than anyone else. How so? His work lived on for years. It disappeared shortly after it uh, came into being, escaped. A couple years later, my parents and I were living on a Native American reservation out west. My father was the doctor there. One day, it appeared there, then gone again. What about you? Would you try it? Someone should try it, make it work. But I don't know that that would ever be me. Why not? I would like to. As much of my field I want to explore, but I don't know. Where I am now, I don't know if it would still be possible. You see, my grandfather, and mostly my father, taught me about medicine, surgery. I enrolled in med school. But when I was 20, both my parents died in a car crash. I was the only one left in the family. By the time I finished school, I was so impatient to conduct the experiment, I naively postponed my internship. I spent all my time studying the family notes, living on my inheritance. And then I met someone who became lost in that relationship. Then one day, you realize years have passed. I saw I made virtually no movement on my work. My money was almost gone. And professionally, hospitals weren't looking to take on older interns whom they felt lacked commitment. So I picked up work as a surgical assistant. And realistically, will be that from here on. I'm halfway through my life, halfway out of this relationship. Do what you know you should do. I don't want to go, but we're filming tomorrow. I have to be on set early. What's this one called? The Next Door Neighbor. I play The Next Door Neighbor. I'd like to see you again. Call me. Yeah. I think that would be a good idea. Please? I think this is the right thing for us, Penny. Continuing to see each other isn't healthy. Can't we try again? I'll be different. I'm sorry, Penny. Hi there. How can I help you? I'm Dr. Jason Frankenstein. I have an appointment with Dean Thurman. Okay, sure. Why don't you have a seat and I will get hold of him. Phil, you're one o'clock with Dr. Yes. Okay. He bought that in a lot. Auctioned off art from a state prison. I guess a murderer or somebody painted it. He can see you now. Jason. Phil Thurman. Good to meet you. Phil, Brad called. You two have dinner arrangements for this evening at 7. Mm. She's cute, ain't she? 
I'm writing a eulogy for a friend. This time for real. <laughs> That's a long story. Let's go in my office, huh? Daddy's home. So, I, uh, hear that Alta Vista University could be the recipient of a substantial scholarship program, huh? Kuna Memorial Hospital is considering setting up a scholarship at one of the colleges in the area, and has appointed me to begin the preliminary work of scouting out different institutions. Oh. So what are the, uh, specifics of the uh, scholarship? The hospital is looking to determine which school has the most consistently outstanding history of physical and intellectual development, and then set up a two student per year scholarship for the most physically gifted and most intellectually gifted freshman students. Hmm. 40 years ago, that would have been me. In fact, I was vice president of a fraternity that had all of the best athletes and students on campus. I uh, was part of a small but effective group of student leaders. But you get older, you move upward. The fraternity, it's larger. But I think you'll find that Alta Vista University has got the best track record of any upstate institution. So, how can I help you? I'll need access to college records so I can examine graduation rates, alumni bios, and so on. I'll also want to examine the current student body, see how they're developing. Run some errands this morning. Want to ride along? Sure.
I can get this for you. I'll give you half after the first delivery, the rest after the second. Fine. Both must be in my lab no more than an hour post-mortem. The first is John Ashley. It's necessary that he suffer no injuries to his body from the neck down. Hey. The second is Gary Clark. I'll need him 48 hours after Ashley. There can be no damage to his head. Good, how are you? The condition of the rest of his body is unimportant. Also, I'll need some assistance. I think you could find me a nurse. Someone with surgical experience who won't have a problem with helping me. I can find you someone. Tomorrow night then. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen you on campus. I only took a few classes last year, but I'll be starting full time in the fall in the architecture program. I hear you're the top member of the track and field team. You hold a number of the university's records. Oh, well, I don't know for how long. I'm a late bloomer, but I'd still like to see myself get better. I'm preparing right now for the state triathlon. This party's breaking up. We should split and go do our own thing. I'm cool with that. Not have anything in mind? Have you ever been to the teepee? Never heard of it. It's this boarded up hotel and restaurant on the edge of town that was built in the 60s. Its design was influenced by Native American art. Even has a waterfall in the back. I've been wanting to check it out for a while now. Yeah, let's go.
Paula, she'll help you whatever you need. So a couple nights from now? All right. What experience do you have? I've done it all. Emergency rooms, adult daycare, psych clinic, four years surgical. That's what you need the most, right? Yes. How do you know Randolph? Church. I used to supply him with drugs out of a clinic that he had runs at. What's the pay? I can give you 800 a week for minimum eight weeks work. What are we doing? Transplanting of a brain into a host body and reanimating. That's not possible, but I guess it doesn't matter. What are we doing tonight? We have to prepare this corpse. Remove the damaged skin and bones from the head, as well as the brain. Treat the body to prevent decay. Prepare the skull to house the new brain. Ready for reanimation. You do very good work. Thanks. How long can you hold off Decay before you bring him back to life? Maybe a month. But we'll have reanimated him before then. I'll need you again in two nights. It would be best if you could stay here until we're done. Sure. I may not be able to get here until late that night after Randolph and Kevin arrive. That's fine. I can handle the prep work alone. Okay. Hey, you. Just seeing how you're doing. Guess I keep missing you at your place. Give me a call. Bye. You guys racing tonight? Yeah, every Friday until the end of the summer. LDL track? Yep. Hey, you should dust off the old Yamaha, Dad. Come down and join us. Uh, no. Son, you be careful now, okay? I will, Mom.
everything okay? Uh, car broke down. No one's home and my phone's dead. Uh, you uh, got one I can borrow? Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, uh, sorry, I can't do more. Bro, what are you doing? Let go! Where's Kevin? Ditching the guy's motorcycle. Paul around. She'll be here later. That should finish our business. You manage to tie up your loose ends? Got a few ideas. Killed Randolph. Does that change anything? Not for me. Should I be concerned about Kevin? He won't get involved. Are we doing anything tonight? We'll finish the prep work on the head. The lab needs to be straightened up. We can do that tomorrow. I'm going out. Feel free to get some sleep. We'll get an early start. calling the past few days, trying to get a hold of you. I'm sorry. I've just been doing a lot. So, how are you? Okay. It's been a long, tiring day. Did you want to talk? You look like you're getting ready to go out. I am. But I have some time. Have you met someone? Well, I'm going to hang out with someone, if that's what you mean. I haven't seen you get this dressed up in a while. I think I'll just head out. You can talk to me if you want. No, but, uh, thanks. I'll see you later. Take care. Later. Today we must transfer the brain into the body and perform reconstructive surgery on the head and face. We'll have to combine skin and bone from both heads in order to complete the task. The end product may not be aesthetically pleasing, but it will serve its purpose until we can do more refined work later. Finishes the prep work. Tomorrow we'll reanimate. A letter came for you this morning. 
So that's in here. What is it? Job offer. From an old medical colleague of my father's. He knows of an Indian reservation in Canada that needs a doctor. Is that something you'd want? I could. I find the culture agreeable. It would be isolated. I would like working with the people and being able to continue some research I've begun on aggressive treatments of certain terminal illnesses. I spent a year in Canada working as a nurse at a coal mine. What was that like? Lots of respiratory illnesses, black lung, bad backs, broken bones, a couple of cave-ins. I like the landscape though. It's gray, bleak, rainy always, early fall, a griminess of the cities. And I like the miners. Why did you leave? I had some bad habits, so I came back home. You should consider that job offer. Right now, my focus is just on this experiment. body for reanimation. We're connecting the stimulators to the body so as to provide a path for the electricity that will allow the adrenal to reanimate. I'm injecting the adrenal. It only remains to feed to the body the electricity necessary to stimulate the drug's root to the tissue and cause it to begin cellular interaction. surgical facility. My name is Jason. I'm a doctor. Do you understand me?
what I'm going to tell you may prove very difficult for you to comprehend. You were found clinically dead, and your body was brought here. I was able to transplant your brain to the body of someone who died recently, and reanimate both the body and your brain. You're alive again, and you have all your physical functions intact. Do you understand what I've told you? can't leave this room. You will eventually, but I have to first make sure you don't experience any setbacks from the operation. You can speak. You can ask me anything about what's happened to you. We're going to step out for a little while. this unexpected? No. That's because there's no way to know what to expect. So I'm trying to expect anything. It's late. You're done for the day. Alright. a bloodbath. We don't know that will happen, and we have to move on. What about your brother's experiments? You know, they, they use damaged brains, and they use their creatures as weapons of abuse. That's two reasons why they're dead. It goes beyond that. Well, do you still plan to work with me? Yes. But after that, Diane and Jason and I are heading out to Oklahoma. I'm going to be taking a position at one of the reservations there. I brought the mail, Grandpa. Thanks, Jason. feel about going out west, Jason? I want to see the country, but I know things aren't going to feel the same if we're all separated. You know, when I was about your age, I hitchhiked across the country, took little odd jobs. I was in a small town in Arizona and they were putting a new highway through an old cemetery. The state hired a local contractor, Brownie was his name, to see that the bodies in the cemetery were unearthed and relocated, and they promised to pay him so much for each body. Well, he hired me and another guy to do the work. Well, one afternoon, I noticed that Brownie was pulling bodies apart, and he was throwing a femur into one casket and a humerus into another casket. And then he turned around and billed the state for those extra bodies. Well, <laughs> the last day of work, half a dozen cars pull up, state officials get out. A couple of state troopers took old Brownie away. 
It seems that he had charged the state for some 2,000 extra bodies <laughs> when that little cemetery was being used. There was less than 800 people in the town. <laughs> Jason, separation is something that keeps happening in life. It's not the same as being apart. You will realize this more and more in time. But for now, focus on your studies, working with your father, and don't let anything distract you. Has he spoken? No. There's nothing physically preventing him. Shock? Maybe choice. You should knock off. Half-awake observations aren't usually the most accurate. Yeah. So what's next? Tests on small motor skills, coordination, brain function, considerably more behavioral observation, the reconstructive facial surgery. What's this about? You've had a lot on your mind lately. You need to relax. And so do I.
Pickles! Pickles? What's in here? I've done worse. My name's Cassie. Jason, what happened to you? The experiment? Yeah. What happened? It worked, but it broke out, and it's killed at least two people. What were you doing here? I don't know. I just wanted to see what you're up to. I know this is absolutely not the best time to have this conversation, but I'm sorry. We both fucked up. What are you going to do? Get it back here. Hopefully. If I can find it. Where do you think it's going? It'll probably head someplace remote. Maybe up north. Into the mountains. I just knew what route it would take.
need to try to bring it back. But if it proves impossible, there's something I need you to arrange. Have you all finished your snacks? Yeah. 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 Okay, so for the last part of our field trip, we're going to explore the woods behind the Clark family's farm. Okay, I want each of you to find a plant or an animal that you find interesting, and we'll try and figure out what it is and talk about what it does, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, stay together. Come with me. There are complications that could arise. You could die again. For good, if you're not where I can help you. I have to study how you react to the surgery. I need these answers.
drop you off someplace safe. Try to bring it back. But if it proves impossible, there's something I need you to arrange. Some travel plans. I shouldn't risk staying here, but there's a place I can go. When I feel it's safe, I'll let you know. I hope you'll join me there.